Okay, I call these questions short answer questions. You're going to have an answer booklet. You're going to put the answers in the, obviously, on the paper in the booklet. And let's just get started here. So you have a, an equation here that you're given. And then we have some questions that go along with it. It says state the energy, I'm um, sorry, the change in energy that occurs in order of break bonds in the hydrogen molecules. Well, I left this in here because it was part of these other questions. Um, as far as chemical reactions go, right, we have your reactants on your left, your products on your right. All reactions, right, I got to put energy in, which is endothermic, to break bonds. And then when bonds are formed, energy is released when I make products. Now, whatever I have more of, that will get the overall reaction and or XO. But all they're asking about here is breaking bonds in hydrogen. So that's energy that's needed, or that's going to be endothermic. That's all you really have to say. For 21, you're asked to draw a Lewis dot diagram for a water molecule. Now, you have one of two ways that you can deal with this. You can memorize the Lewis dot diagrams for the molecules that are typically asked on the regions. Remember, for water, you also need to show the two lone pairs of electrons on oxygen. So it forms two oxygen-hydrogen bonds and then two lone pairs. And for some students, it's just easier to memorize the group of molecules that you need to know. If you're reasoning it out, you go to the periodic table, you see oxygen's in group 16, it has six valence electrons, so the first two were paired, so that's two, three, four, five, six, so two pairs, but there's these two openings here, I'll use a different color, and now we need two hydrogens. Each hydrogen has one electron, so I have hydrogen providing one, and the other hydrogen providing one. So, when you draw your Lewis dot uh, structure, you can use a dash, but a dash does represent a pair of electrons. So whatever works best for you. And then finally in 22, we see again the uh, strength of attraction for electrons. In other words, they're talking about electronegativity again. And we're going to compare that to the strength of attraction for electrons by an oxygen atom. Well, oxygen has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen. Remember, fluorine is the most electronegative. So oxygen has a greater strength than hydrogen for electrons. That's all you have to say. And, or you can look up the electronegativity values if you want and, and report those. All right. The last two questions here. We have a molecule and it's a structural formula and you're asked to state the type of chemical bond between hydrogen and the nitrogen atom. All right, so there it is. And the dash represents two electrons. These are two different nonmetals. It is definitely a covalent bond, but more than that, it is a polar covalent bond because the two nonmetals are not the same. Finally, in 24, it says, well, let me erase this, explain in terms of charge distribution why a molecule of this, which I don't say very well, butanamide, I don't think I really said it great, is polar. Well, it's polar because there is an asymmetrical distribution of charge. Here we are, back to good old snap. So that's all you really have to say, is that the charge distribution is asymmetrical. Anytime you see on short answer, explain in terms of, you have to say it in terms of whatever they're looking for. So asymmetrical distribution of charge. There's a few more short answer questions coming up in the last part.